joints on the last Live in the hills, but I still get a spread Something for the live, but I still reinvest it Fear how I feel, then you feel less a blessing I just want the lesson, I just want protection I'm up and I'm down, but the sound like progression Farming never plans if he waits for perfection I think it's to the uh, down, yeah. Alright ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're having a wonderful day Today I want to talk about in the money versus out the money options And I thought we should do that because it gives us a chance to talk about some of the more beginner aspects Understanding the difference between the two on the option chain But then for the intermediate and advanced When to use specific type of options Because in different markets, different options are going to be a lot better So I think it's really important here if you've been watching the market Seeing how a lot of things have changed from 2020 even to 2021 The market has done a lot of things and things are moving And you need that ability to adapt if you want to be a successful option trader Now before we talk about any of this This is actually going to be the main point that you need to understand there is no one is better than the other. I know a lot of people, even myself included, I like certain out the money options. A lot of people who've traded options for a long time will say they only trade in the money. They have different pros and cons. We're going to talk about them. I even want to talk about where you could lose on some of them. But the main thing to understand here is that it all depends on your strategy. So this is really the point here that I want you guys to be able to read the market. And then if you have a plan in motion or you have an idea of what's going to happen, you use a specific option to get you there. It is a vehicle. So I encourage you to keep an open mind and then if you are really a beginner trader This is going to give you a little bit more insight into this idea that okay Well, if this stock is going up, you're supposed to buy a call or if this stock is going down You should buy a put by understanding in the money versus out the money You will see how that reflects and then if you kind of have an idea of this stock is going to go up or down You would select in the money or out the money to kind of reflect your ideas a little bit more So right off the bat, we are going to be dealing with a few different option chains I'm going to be showing you TD Ameritrade then you're going to see an option trade on E-Trade and hopefully you're taking notice this is what an option chain is where you see it say strike price has a bid and an ask. You can see volume and all of that stuff, but this is the traditional standard of an option chain and just pay attention. You saw it on the TD Ameritrade. Here on E-Trade, it comes in blue right there. That is what's signifying in the money versus out the money. The in the money is the ones that are usually colored right there. So that is E-Trade and TD Ameritrade. It's a little bit more difficult to see it on Robinhood, but usually there's this little line over here that is telling you the price of the stock, the share price. You can see it right there on the option chain. And depending on if it's a call or a put, the options that are going to be lower than the current price or at the price those are going to be in the money. So that is going to be for the beginners, but understanding where an option is relative to the strike price, that is the whole point of all of this. So I got the keys for you here, and this is just one of the terminology things you'll want to know or that people will talk about. And as we get through this video here, we're going to have different degrees of this or different degrees of moneyness. And what that is, is pretty much the strike price relative to the market price of the underlying stock. So if the strike price is closer to the market price of the stock, that means it is going to be in the money or it's going to have a high moneyness. So if the strike price is further away from where the stock is currently trading, it's going to have a low moneyness factor. So where we're starting here is just at the basics in the money versus out the money. ITM, that stands for in the money. OTM stands for out of the money. And now one thing you'll kind of hear us talk about here is going to be ATM at the money. So that's where you start getting into the more medium advance. It's not necessarily saying something with a low moneyness or a high moneyness, but something kind of right in the middle there. So my goal moving forward is to kind of understand here the difference between the two and when do you use them so that you could understand. Now I'm going to go over the basics of it, but this is just my opinion and how I view it and where I see opportunities to use different strategies, whether it is buy in the money, out the money or at the money options. So when it comes to some of the factors here, we will go over in the money and out the money, but just off the basics, this is one of the biggest things you could spot from the get-go in the money is going to cost more and you could lose more and you could lose faster however given that their options both of them can lose pretty fast but now usually in the money is going to create smaller percentage returns and even a little bit more on the losses but that's not always going to be the case you have to understand it doesn't matter if you get in the money or out the money every option is very risky if it doesn't end up in the money by expiration day that option is going to be worthless so just because they have different Different prices here it doesn't mean that it offers a better trade or not that is the main point here it just all depends on your strategy so looking at in the money and when you want to use them or why or even just understanding them a little bit here the number one factor you got to understand is going to be intrinsic value versus extrinsic value out the money options if it is not in the
the money and the strike price is further away from where the stock is trading at, whatever you are paying for that option is purely extrinsic value. People will also refer to that as time value because you're agreeing to buy the stock or agreeing to sell it if you're buying a put at a price that is way far away from where it's trading at. So there's no real value on that option. That is why you usually pay less money, but you're only paying for extrinsic value. When you come to in the money options, this is why they usually have a little bit more of a price because they have intrinsic value. If the strike price is at 150 and the stock is at 151, and you buy that 150 strike price, you already have $1 per share of intrinsic value. You're getting to buy the stock at a lower price than where it's trading, but don't forget, you have to pay a price for that option, so it gives you a different break even in all of that. However, there is intrinsic value. So now this is also the reason why in the money options move less percentage-wise because you are essentially going to just get dollar for dollar as the stock moves. So they call this delta every stock has a delta of one if it is equity. You buy one share of a stock, you're gonna get a delta of one. You buy 100 shares of a stock, your delta is 100. That means for every dollar the stock moves, the equity, you are going to make your delta in terms of dollars back. So if you have 500 shares, your delta is 500, the stock moves $1, that means your position will appreciate by $500. So when it comes to understanding delta with options, the real key here is that every stock has a delta of one, so depending on your option in the money or out the money, you're buying a derivative, you're buying an option that represents the underlying value of that stock. So the closer you are to the stock price, the closer you're going to get it to a delta of one, meaning you should make dollar for dollar as the stock moves a dollar, your option should appreciate a dollar. But now if you're further from the money, your option is still going to have a delta, but it's not going to have the same delta as a share, which has a one delta it's going to be a lot lower. And that way it's pretty much telling you, you make less as the stock moves dollar for dollar. So understand now why in the money options gain slower because now once you get in the money, all you can make is dollar for dollar. So the stock goes another $5 up from where you are at the strike price. That's $5 of intrinsic value. You're going to make $500 on that plus whatever extrinsic value. But the deeper it goes in the money, the less extrinsic value it's going to have because now it's all about the delta and how the stock is moving. And to kind of sprinkle it in here with my personal strategy, I do not use delta. I don't look at it like that. However, However, I don't look at it in the sense of trying to find an option with a certain delta, but understanding this helps give me a better idea of how I choose to play every option because again, you're seeing here, sometimes you go in the money, sometimes you go out of the money. But when it comes to in the money options, the number one key is intrinsic value because at the end of the day, when the stock price hits expiration, if it has no intrinsic value, that option is going to be worthless. And now on the other hand, intrinsic value is going to be capped by a delta of one depending on the stock versus something that is out the money and has extrinsic value and could essentially go from out the money to in the money to going from pure extrinsic value to now extrinsic plus intrinsic. That is the main goal, but that's why people like out the money options because they're cheaper and they offer larger percent gains. However, doesn't mean that intrinsic value options can't go up a thousand percent. If you buy one for a dollar and it goes $10 in the money, that would go up a thousand percent. So now to the next factor of in the money, and this is where I like to use them when it comes to me picking, you know, am I going to go in the money or out the money? If I see that a stock is a slow mover, I want an in the money option. This is a mistake I see a lot with a lot of new option traders because what they will do, they'll pick a company that doesn't really move much, even like think GE or something with a big flow, and they will go without the money option saying, okay, an option 30% out the money. I think the stock is going to move 30% in a month, but the stock hasn't moved 30% in a year. It's going to be more of a slow mover. So if you're like, well, I want to play an option on this stock, I would determine if that stock moves fast or slow. But if it is going to move slow, there's a better chance of profiting off of the move if you're in the money. So take two scenarios. You have a one month of time. You could go for in the money. You're going to spend a little bit more and then the stock only moves a dollar or two. Again, what you pay for the option in the break even is important. And that's where you could also lose as well too. But point of in the money in that situation is that if the stock only moves $2 in that time frame and then comes expiration, you are at least going to be $2 in the money. So 
if it's a slow mover, you can make sure you capitalize on whatever info you have on the stock or whatever you think or any immediate move because now if it moves dollar for dollar, the option is going to adjust with that. Whereas if you went with the out the money stock, you paid the premium, you may have spent less than the in the money, but the stock only moves $2 and you're still out the money, that contract is going to expire worthless and you will lose your money. The next instance where in the money is going to be better, and this is where I'm like, hey, I would prefer in the money or at the money, but in the money is going to protect you for this. It's the same scenario as last time and just understanding that if it is going to move slow or there's certain moves in a volatile choppy market, you could see big gains in one direction one day and then it flip flops the next day. Then two days later, it goes back up in these sort of markets where the market has a lot of moves up and down. But just to stay in the same place, if you want to profit off of that trade in the money is probably going to be the best bet for you. Why? Because now you could get dollar for dollar cheaper than buying the stock if it gets volatile and you're on the right direction direction and it moves really really big you could capture a large portion of the gain and then even if it bounces and you're still in the money you'll be a little bit protected but the whole point is market starts moving volatile if it moves five ten percent you want to be able to capture that move and profit off that whereas if you went out the money 20 30 percent it might gain extrinsic value on the first move but then it bounces and then the extrinsic value gets clapped so even if the stock comes back to the direction of your option it won't go up as much but then if you were in the money and got dollar for dollar the whole time you are able to ride that wave out. This is very important in this market because I'm sure you guys have seen the volatility, but then you're seeing, wait, I bought a put, but then the stock went down, but then I didn't make money on the put. I encourage you to go compare the in the money puts versus the out the money and you can kind of see something and that is something that we do a lot. So in that same breath here, it is also good if you really want to even day trade it. So if you're looking or expecting more of a short term move or you could say, hey, I really think the stock is gonna move because of this, there's a catalyst by getting in the money, you can make sure that your value is at least guaranteed or you're going to get compensated more for a quick move in that direction because now you don't need it to hit out of the money or go a certain percentage. So all of these might sound pretty similar, but this is to understand different scenarios, different strategy. And when it comes to the investing world, a lot of people are going to use the in the money options as more of an immediate hedge. So if you make a big position and you want to hedge something and you don't want to pretty much suffer any of the midterm losses, you're going to want to get something in the money to protect your position, either dollar for dollar or close to it, given the time frame you're looking to protect it in. Whereas if you compare that to out the money options, we're going to talk about this here. Out the money strategies are usually protected protective instead of immediate hedging. So what that means is that when you go out the money, you're saying, well, I'm going to go 10, 20, 30% out the money so that if it drops below a certain point, that would protect your position or it would make sure you start to profit at that point. But it's not saying, okay, I'm buying something. I want to hedge it now. You're pretty much hedging it from a point with the out the money versus the in the money. You're trying to hedge almost immediately. So essentially, if you buy a stock and you're like, okay, I want to protect it just in case it goes below this price. I want to make sure I don't get clapped. You would buy an out the money. Think of it as an insurance policy. But let's say you didn't have anything or you buy something new. The market starts moving. You're like, wait a minute. I want some insurance and I kind of want some immediate hedging. You're going to want to go to in the money or at the money versus something out the money, which could still profit you, but has to get below a certain point before it really starts protecting your position dollar for dollar. So understanding this and kind of both these natures, this is why I'm saying understand how it's used for different strategies. Now, understanding the two a little bit bit better. A lot of people compare the prices of in the money and out the money. And like we said, right off the bat, in the money options are usually or always going to cost more than out the money options. But this is a point that a lot of traders miss when it comes to looking at them. It is the spread. So if it's deep in the money, like really, really far in the money, and that's what we mean. So you could see here, this is the stock is at 150. This is the in the money 150 option. You see right when it turns blue. But if you start going like $100 in the money, this is what we mean by deep in the money. You could still trade them, but the bids and asks get a little bit higher here. But the main point is some of these in the money and at the money options, the spreads are usually going to be tighter. So the difference between the bid and the ask, if it is in the money or at the money, it's going to be smaller usually than some of these at the 
out the money ones because these ones are all extrinsic value. And since they're less likely, they're going to have a lot less demand. Less demand me means more liquidity and higher spread. And just on another note to look at here, depending on the stock that you're trading, if it is a big moving stock, has a low float, more of a growth name, can move a lot. Even the options itself will have a fairly large spread. This is 50 cents. This is 30 cents. This is 20 cents. But then this is what I'm saying here. You go further out the money, you got 20 cents spreads. This is literally almost a hundred percent value. Whereas here it's about 10%, 20% of the value is in the spread. So this is important to know, especially when you're looking at an option chain, you're saying, well, I see the stock moving. What's the market like? Is it choppy? Is it volatile? Do you think it's going to be a quicker move? Or are you going to be doing more of a day trade? These are factors you got to figure out to decide, go in the money or out the money. But then once you go through all those checklists, you could start looking and seeing, well, what are the prices of the out the money? Am I going to pay more of a premium? Do I want to capture more of an immediate move without paying up front? in the money might be a better option there. But this is one of my little tricks, so I hope you made it this far because a lot of new traders or people I've even seen trade options for a long time, they ignore the prices. They ignore the spreads on some of these options. And this really does tell you a lot here because it could tell you about demand, liquidity, but then too, you have a break even and you could really compare relative values here. Even though sometimes you may pay more if your idea is to capture a certain type of move, it may make more sense to go in the money or even just go slightly out the money if there is, depending on the demand in this marketplace, might be able to help you out. So again, it all depends on your strategy. And now that brings us to one of the final points within the money. We talked about hedging, but a lot of people ignore this factor. You could buy in the money if you want to collect the dividend, believe it or not. Now this gets a little tricky and you better be really, really good at math, but depending on your time frame, let's say you wanted to get into a stock, you kind of wanted to play the move, maybe you even wanted to play X dividend. You can get the in the money option. You can make sure you get dollar for dollar. So coming into the dividend, if the stock starts running up and you're in the money, it goes up $5, you'll benefit off of that option. And you could either sell that and walk away with the profit. But depending on what you paid initially for the option in that break even, or if you spent a little bit amount of money, it had a big run up and then the stock offers a dividend. What a lot of people don't realize is that if you exercise your option before the ex dividend day, it has to make sense on the contract. You can act actually exercise the contract and then you would end up collecting the dividend. You have to make sure you get it before X dividend day. And remember, if you exercise an option, that means you can't sell it. So if the option is worth $300 on the option chain and you say, well, I'm going to exercise it, give me the shares, and then that'll allow you to collect the dividend. You don't get to sell it for 300. Now, intrinsically, if it was $3 in the money, you will have $300 in equity gain on the share anyway. So it all comes down to math. Again, this is a little bit more of an advanced strategy, but you could see here, depending on what you're trying to do, depending on the different asset, there's different reasons to go for in the money option. Now, moving on to good old out the money here, like we said, the biggest factor you got to understand is extrinsic value. And this is why a lot of people don't like it because if it doesn't end up in the money, there's only extrinsic value. The option is worth nothing. Even right off the bat, if you buy an option out of the money, you have to think about it. You're paying somebody money for an option that is literally worthless. So think about what you're doing with that actual option deal. The stock here is at 150. You're going up to somebody and you know, I did it here. I paid a little bit less, but if you're paying somebody $115 to buy the stock at $185 when you could buy it at 150, why in the world would you be paying somebody hundreds of dollars for something that you could buy at a way cheaper price? It is a worthless deal. This is all extrinsic value. It's whatever happens in the time. That's why we said out the money is more like an insurance policy because if we wake up and the stock shoots up 20 30 percent then yeah this will go in the money this will increase in value thankfully we paid that but if that never happens and that's why every day that goes on these get affected more by time going on and then the stock not moving Whereas in the money is not going to have that effect as much because it's already in the money and gets its value from something else. So this is valued based on what could happen or potentially, whereas a lot of the value from the in the money it includes extrinsic, but it's based on kind of where it's at right there. However, when we get to some of the problems between the two, don't always trust in that you can't trust any option. Remember that you can't trust them. So understand what you're buying, but that's the biggest factor without the money. And this is where they gain the most money because it goes from extrinsic to intrinsic. That's where you are able to get a lot bigger returns. So now that is even another reason why you would want 
to use out the money options. If your strategy is seeking large percent returns, you have a high risk tolerance and you're willing to take some of those risks and want bigger gains, you are going to get bigger percentage moves and be able to expose yourself a lot less and spend less money because, well, you're going to be taking a bigger risk. But this is one of the bigger appeals for out the money options. This is why I like them because depending on the play and depending on the stock, and this is why I'm saying you really got to understand what you're playing, you could pay dramatically less. You're spending $100 for out the money versus $800 in the money. If the stock shot up $30 and actually went to 180, this option would go to $30, but that's only about three, 400%, which is still large from where it's at. But then this one would probably go to $900, $1,000, and that would be a 1,000% move. So this is why people like out the money options as well. But now, if you wanna make this judgment and decision, it goes back to the first thing we said with in the money versus out the money. But in the money, you kind of want them for slower moving stocks when it comes to out the money I like to use them on stocks that can move big because then that means you could get a bigger surprise and then it has more of a chance ending up in the money so when it does come to deciding in the money or out the money one big factor is you got to understand the stock is it a big mover or a slow mover and then if there is a reason why you're playing it a catalyst news information earnings it's on you to determine the weight of that news to say well I think it can make it move big so out the money might make a little bit more sense here or you think it'll move you'll think it'll move on a short time frame but you don't really think it can move too large in the money would probably be your best bet so now this brings it to my favorite point understanding out the money options here it really relies on the trend of the market like i'm saying if the market is really choppy going back and forth making a lot of moves to stay in the same place after a week a month a quarter that is going to kill out the money options that is really what we call the cuckening where it does a lot of movement but at the end of it your options are just going to expire worthless so if you want to go for out the money options options, you are also going to need to factor in, yes, the stock and what the stock does, but now where is the trend of the market or is that stock kind of independent from that? And that you can see that sometimes with rotations. If a stock has its own independent trend and it is kind of moving in a trend or there is catalyst and there's reasons why it could move or stay in a direction and actually get to a strike price, that is your best bet without the money and that's where you can make a lot. But if it turns into a choppy market, it moves big on for two days and then chills out for another week or two, then in the money is going to be the one that's probably going to benefit whereas out the money you might get caught overpaying and then it will just decay to death so putting this all together like we said in the money versus out the money it all depends on your strategy and this is just the key to watch if you want to capture immediate moves in the market and you want to essentially hedge immediately you want in the money if you want something more protective in the event that anything happens out of nowhere and causes a big move or you're kind of waiting at certain levels there out the money would probably be your best friend but the real big point here is understanding now what is just actually happening with these options in general and what I really mean by that is understand how they're going to move in different environments and this is the real key I'll even give you guys some examples after this but you just need to understand this point when deciding the tour these are one of the things I got to keep in mind is what kills these options so if you could stay away from this or keep this in mind this will help you but when it comes to out of the money options if you get a choppy market or you're in a choppy market and you get big momentum and then the gains of price and then it switches back up and just does this bounce up and down, up and down, out the money options are going to get killed. So when you're in a market like this and it does this for a month or two, you are going to get killed. Even in the money options might get clapped a little bit, but if you're in the money, you get a little couple dollar move, you could profit, but out the money, these are what's going to kill your markets or these big moves is what I'm talking about. It drops big and instead of hedging immediately and getting in the money or at the money and you go out of the money instead or further out the money, then it bounces up and even comes back down those out of the monies will get crushed a little bit more because you are playing protective and protective you will profit off of a bigger move but then on the smaller moves immediate hedging is going to benefit you so if you're in a market like this and you could see or even this time frame again we're just looking at the same hundred days but this sort of ramp up and a little bit of an edging up here where you could see a trend this is where out the monies are going to benefit you in the money would also benefit but you will just get lower percent returns and you'll probably have to spend more money up front Another good example to understand here would even be Roblox because you'll see here if you played out of the monies these whole time, believe it or not, they would have been good at these points here. But then every single month of expiration, a lot of those out of the monies got killed, even though it looks like there's a trend now, it's just breaking out. But if you were trying to play a stock like this and it looked like this all the way up until here 
in the money might be better for you unless you could confirm there's a trend or that it would go out the money and go up. And this is a company we ended up getting shares on instead. And you could kind of see that. But the type of movement on the stock or the market in general, that is going to be the real killer for out the monies. You need to know where the stock is going or have some more evidence or basis that it will get there. And then finally, when it comes to in the money options and even out the money too, the big surpriser that kills a lot of people is falling out of the money. So even though in the money does give you better opportunities, I could show you that roadblock or even the spy and say you can make dollar for dollar. But remember, you're going to spend a lot more money. If you do hit the trend, you could still benefit less percent returns. But then come expiration day, if you're in the money and you're barely in the money and it falls out of the money at expiration, that option will be worthless. So you could buy an option three, six months of time in the money. You could even be five, ten dollars in the money. Everything's doing good. It holds up its value quite nice. But then come that final week, it falls at the money or then falls out the money that option will expire and will be worth zero. So this is always one thing I say because when you're looking at any option in the money or out the money, depending on where you're at profit level, you have to be careful for this and keep an eye on the clock because if it is prone to falling out of the money with a little bit of time left, that will be the ultimate thing that could turn a very good play into an ultimate loser. So let me give you some other examples. Like if I saw Ford and I wanted to play, you could see it here at a one minute, but Ford is usually a slow moving stock. So by default, I'd want to look for in the money and that's that's why I see it here. I'd want in the money, but then when it starts breaking out the trend, maybe out of the money, but keep this in mind. This is something I always say here, and this is a big point to notice. Oh, here's the Ford chart just in case you missed it. But I always say when it comes to option trading, if the stock is usually below 20, 30 bucks, sometimes it is better to just get the shares instead of paying a premium because even the Ford's in the money, you're probably going to be putting down 10, 20% of the total value, but you won't get to own the stock in general. Now, like I'm saying here during during these periods when it move when it move a lot in the money probably would have been better because you're seeing if it spent almost a year not moving more than 10 20 percent a lot of those out the monies would have expired but now once you kind of start seeing the trend here you could have went out the money in time and you could see kind of where it's at that may have been a little bit more beneficial but now let's come to amc here same thing in general cheaper price stock but it used to be a slow mover and that's why i'm saying when it would move slow and this is how you could use this strategy to understand if a stock does start breaking out some Sometimes certain stocks, they're ones where pretty much up until 2021, I would have used the in the money, but now you start seeing it gets into a trend and it could move a little bit more out. The monies are good. But again, in this one, I would go with shares and that's what I did with both Ford and AMC. But now this is a cool one to look at because McDonald's, you could really see it in the chart. Sometimes it gets trend and sometimes those out the monies could be good, but in the money or at the money in general, near the money, these are going to be the best one. Cause what do you notice about it? It gets these little bursts. It comes down, gets a little burst, chills out, but it could do something of these moves and then when it gets that volatility or you're seeing it here it'll really calm down for a long time get back into a mode chill out for another week and do that again so in this case having near the money or in the money you're going to be able to profit off those options more and that one would probably be a better trade but zoom the chart out you've seen this a lot with mcdonald's and could see how it's moved over three years this one just screams in the money versus 30 40 percent out the money when it doesn't move fast so same logic you could apply it to another name walmart over here again it doesn't move too much this is a nice move over three years but put it back up here on the one year you could see it has these bursts calm down a little bit of burst another shoot then comes down again if you were in the money here or in the money here you could profit off of these little spike ups so that if you knew the stock was going to move and have that idea you could immediately profit off of it whereas if you were out the money and you were too far you may have hit it over here then it falls out then it takes some time you probably might not profit the same way and then you see eventually it takes time to get to a point and then levels out in the money or near the money would probably be the best on a play like Walmart. Now coming to one of the favorites, Tesla, this is one that has had some of these uptrends and you've seen Yes, it can chill out for periods, but do you notice this is a big mover? This is a chart that starts at 100 and ends at $900 in this one year period. That is not how the other stocks look that we showed up here. This one would be better for out of the money and think about it since it's more expensive in the way it moves in the money is probably going to be really expensive. You're even going to take a high risk. If you do need a hedge your position, that makes sense why you would pay that much if you need immediate hedging in the money. 
But depending on the trend and now the stock moves a lot, out the money would be better on something like Tesla or has explosive growth. So all in all, I hope this helps you. I know some of you may know this. I know some of you may be on different levels of trading. But one thing I want you to understand here is, yes, understand the basics of it. But now start tying this in. We've talked a lot about news and everything else in the market. But now you guys need to be able to read the market and interpret it. And now depending on how you interpret anything that comes in here, you could formalize your plays and make sure you're getting the right vehicle that can match up with the thesis that you have in mind so that you don't get caught up in these positions where you're buying certain options you were right on the move but you weren't able to profit on it the same because you chose a different method to get there so hope this helps you guys i hope you have a wonderful weekend i will have the watch list tomorrow let me know if you have any questions and balance the budget keep the armor on and get the launcher baby let's go <laughs>